This episode is brought to you by your family. <laughs> Sponsored they by. They know you. They love you. Uh-huh. But they will push back. Yes. If you try to soak up every single weekend. Yes. With your hobbies. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Coaches on Couch. Being slouches. Today, for those of you who like to race every weekend out of the year. Every 52 races or more is what I want <laughs> per year. We're going to teach you how to manage a long beep season. <laughs> Wait. Does it say race? I, I, didn't did have say, to, I didn't have to beep that. You didn't need to. Didn't uh, need to manage a that. long race season. Yep. Uh, There's a lot of you guys out there who just love, love, love racing. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you. Mm -hmm. But um, really what we're after here is we're we're trying to keep some balance and avoid burnout uh, is the big one. All things we've seen as coaches. Yep. I'm Coach Dale Sanford. I am Coach Bryant Funston. We are the co-founders of BPC Performance Coaching, where we specialize in helping time crunch athletes optimize their busy schedules so they can maximize their athletic performance. You can find out more about BPC by going to buildpeakcompete.com, checking Facebook and YouTube at buildpeakcompete, all up on that Instagram at BPC Performance, and all over the podcasting networks. Choose your favorite. You should find us there. If not, they don't matter. (laughs) All right. Or we don't. I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. (laughs) So it's pretty obvious that like between triathlon, gravel, cross, mountain bike, road season, ultra running, road running, uh, all the many disciplines of endurance sports, um, it's pretty easy to like find yourself racing a ton. A lot. Yeah, you can honestly get a race in every month of the year. Uh, easy easy you every weekend of the year pretty much every probably. weekend yeah. or every week of the year i yep. mean even even during uh christmas and thanksgiving they put a 5k in the middle mm-hmm. of the week yeah exactly <laughs> the old turkey trot yeah so i mean you could literally race every weekend if you want well let's just say if you're uh let's say you're single hmm. living in a van mm. yeah <laughs> easily <laughs> very high net worth <laughs> yeah easily race Every weekend. Yeah. If you have kids uh, or you have a significant other that demands your time, uh, a, a job, job. Yeah. that demands your time, then there you risk burnout mm-hmm. uh, quite a bit more. So managing the entire year uh, is a little bit more challenging for you. And by burnout, that's like mental burnout, but that is also physical burn oh, yeah. like injury your body just says nope yep you mentally may say go 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 which yeah. in general is the problem we have with folks that race too much it's mentally i love racing and i love doing well at races so i want to be fit year round and i want to do well at every single race i do and i'm going to do <laughs> a lot of them all of them and eventually something's got to get i'm not gonna i have seen i maybe Maybe it's more common in triathlon because of the way people get into the sport and go straight to long course. Mm-hmm. But I have seen a lot of people go train for a, an A race, mental burnout the day after, and they're like out of the sport. Yeah. Maybe for over, you know, forever, yeah. but at least, you know, months, like people put their stuff away and they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to, it was too stressful. It was too, like, I put so much into it. Like, well, and to be honest, like that's what's so appealing about the Ironman distance, you know, that one big lofty goal, just just completing is is a, you know, really tough, challenging, awesome thing to do. All your friends are like, wow, I can't believe you did that. Yeah. Small percentage move, of the world. Move that over to what, you know, we're seeing now with gravel. There's a lot of these gravel events that are 10 yeah. plus hour events that you've got. Gravel's awesome. It's a fun community. Like... It's 
for someone who's new to the sport, there's a lot of appeal to doing that. A self challenge, something that's, you know, set a lofty goal, but it's a similar thing. You know, if you're, if your first race you're picking or your first event is something that's going to be 10 plus hours, there's a lot of training demands that go into that. And you're, you're kind of going from, you don't have that, all that background, all that training, all that fitness that you've, that you've built. Um, it can be a, it can be a grind for sure. Yeah. hundred percent. So if you are, uh, so if you like have a demanding job, mm -hmm. kids, so we're going into that kind of more time crunched yes. person. Time crunched. This is, this is how we kind yes. of break things down for our athletes. Um, the number one thing is picking your goal races. Yep. And for, I'll just speak, I'll let you speak in, you know, as for, for like cyclists, but with triathletes, that usually means one to two races a year. Um, if you are putting three and four big A races, if they're, let's just say they're half and full iron, you know, there are people out there, don't get me wrong, who race multiple full distance races a year, multiple half. Most of those people are professionals. <laughs> And most of them have been training the a really other, long time. <laughs> the other portion of those people are retired yeah. and, and have a lot of time and disposable income. Yep. Um, but if you're one of the many out there that can't, you know, can't afford or can't, you know, justify doing multiple races a year, we have to, we have to pick a couple that we really want to go mm -hmm. and focus on. Yes. And the big tip here is this to... This is for everyone. Yeah. Make sure that those races are at minimum of three months apart. Like, don't set a goal race in mid-May and then another one in June. Like, y your ability to recover from that race and then kind of rebuild, it y you're not going to have peak performances at both, like, for most people. Sometimes, occasionally, I have seen people uh, recover do another little quick build to sharpen up and then have a better race the second time. Just a little less common. Yeah. So if you really want to set yourself up for less burnout and better performances, I would separate those big targeted eggs in the basket races three months apart. And especially, this is even like especially important if you're in that group that we were initially talking about where you're choosing a longer duration event. Yeah. Like something where your your race day is going to put so much fatigue into you. It's going to take so much out of you that you need to take plenty yeah. of time off. Yeah. Um, a little sure. different than if your race is, a, say, a 5K that's yeah. taking you 20 minutes to do. Right. So there's, there's obviously looking at what these races are is a big part of it. But we're kind of preaching towards the people who are doing kind of these bigger, harder, longer. And even still, you know, you, you can't be thinking you're going to be on peak fitness for six plus weeks necessarily. Yeah. That's not realistic. Yeah. So in terms of like, I know we do it a little bit different for a lot of our cyclists. So what's the big difference? Yeah. With there? cyclists, um, in general, there's a lot more events and it's, it's less demanding overall in general. So say you're a road racer and your, your, your race weekends are a 50 to 60 mile road race and a shorter time trial and a criterium that's typically 60 minutes or less. So usually in training, you're actually getting more than that. Going to a race, you're actually probably training less than what you would be on a weekend. And it's not beating you up nearly as much as someone who is running, is doing longer, you know, bike stuff. Um, but that, that run intensity in a race that you'd get in triathlon um, and even in your general training leading up to it is a lot more than what a cyclist is dealing with. So with, with cyclists, tons of events available typically. Um, and usually your training that you've done leading into it, that training load, um, when you go to the race weekend, it's actually less. So we like to pick a more of a time frame, like end of May, or like yeah. let's pick some races around this specific time frame. Maybe it's a three to four week span. Um, and it, it might not necessarily be racing every weekend, but like let's pick some races and let's try to have the fitness geared up. Let's use a few of those races to really sharpen the legs, get you some of those race intensity or some race intensity. And then, you know, kind of on the back end of that, let's have, you know, sort of your, your A priority 
race, but we, we target a little more racing leading into a goal race than what you might if you're doing a longer course event. Yeah. So they, yeah, like you said, that's more for the, the typical road racer mm -hmm. who's doing events that are not, you know, four plus hours, exactly. that sort of thing. Exactly. Um, now when I start dealing with folks that are wanting to do say unbound or the mid South or, you know, these, uh, the rule of three has, has become more popular for folks in the Southeast. Now you're starting to look at events that are eight plus hours. Yeah. And that's not something that we're putting three of those back to back. Uh, so it, it, it then trends a lot more towards what we would do with a triathlete. Like, okay, let's build towards this big goal race, maybe pick some shorter stuff as training. And we'll, we'll kind of dive into that here in a minute. Um, but then we need to separate that. We need to give you time off. We need to make sure you recover. Um, otherwise I've seen it numerous times. It's like I've encouraged athletes not to put big events close together because you don't have that rebuild time in between yeah. and they end up, they end up burnt out. So on that point, like one of my biggest tips for people is to get a year calendar, mm -hmm. like one, like one that you can see the entire year on one piece of paper. Yep. Uh, and that's, that's a lot in one, on one sheet of paper. It's roughly 365 days. It's roughly 365 for leap years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so getting all of that, getting that on there and then putting marking all of your race weekends or days, race days, mark all of them. And then, you know, you can color code it if you're that type of person. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> uh, you know, color code the ones you're really going after, your A races. And then as you kind of get into your, like, B races, train through races, practice races, which we'll get into, um, put them all on there. And then start adding in your family vacations. Yeah, take, take <laughs> your A race and then take this big red marker and let's do about four weeks before that. And if you have family vacations that are going to prevent you from training for a week plus, yeah, I'd switch your goal race. Like if there's stuff that's going to have you not able to train in the three to four weeks, if that race means that much to you, if it's your, uh, all my eggs are in this basket, yeah, then you need to pick a different race. That's vacations, big work engagements. Yep. Weddings. Weddings. I've seen, seen that. I've seen a lot of weddings ruin some performances. You know, that damn open bar. <laughs> uh, don't do anything hasty, like move. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no major life changing decisions. Hopefully, job career changes. Right. Yep. Like anything that is clearly going to derail your training. Uh, and for those of you. Uh, uh, dads out there, if you are going to have a child, <laughs> if, if your wife is going to have a, a child uh, in that stretch, do not put. Don't do it, man. Do not put a race don't in the month it. leading into uh, into that because I've I've been through setting it. yourself up for disaster. That's I mean we could probably go through all the crazy situations that we've had to work around in years past, but when you're going like uh, like. When you're going like into your races, if if there's anything that like major family thing that's gonna like mm -hmm. get in there, like just avoid it. Like yeah. pick another one. It's or the, really not worth it. It's it's not to say you can't put that race on your calendar, but it's not an A race anymore. No. It's not your priority race. It can't be. Like if you want to do well, we can't have that be your priority race. Because it's just not gonna go <laughs> it's just not gonna go great. No, it's not. You have you have to have your family on board. Yeah, I, I like can't stress that enough. Like you have to have your family, like behind you, behind the training, you know, integrated mm -hmm. into this. And we we have gone into this before. We we talked uh, to Tim Lynn, that, you know, in another episode, yeah. all about integrating family into training and stuff. Yeah, they have to be on board. So. Like, oh, there's, there's numerous conversations I've had with, with my athletes and it's, and that's, I mean, we generally work with time crunch folks yep. and the big thing is balance. If you want to have a long term, um, if you want to stay in the sport long term, 
you've got to have that balance. You've got to have those times of year where you're able to step back. You're able to skip a race. You're able to uh, prioritize, you know, your, your family, obviously they're probably going to be prioritized anyway. Um, but if, if you can balance that, if you can say, okay, I know the 12 weeks leading into my race, I'm going to be super focused. Let your wife know, let your husband know, let your kids know, like this block, I'm going to really try to dial it in. But then having flexibility outside of that is key. Um, and it's, it's something that your significant other will definitely appreciate if, if you're not the, the big problem we have is the people that want to start throwing races in at random without the significant other like being aware of this like oh hey uh by the way there's a race i want to do this weekend and next weekend and the one after that and eventually it's like they don't know but if they can see it on the calendar and you guys are in agreement your odds of having a good race are going to really go up yeah this just in this episode is brought to you by your family (laughs) sponsored they know you they love you Uh uh-huh but they will push back. Yes. If you try to soak up every single weekend. Yes. With your hobbies. All right. So we've got our calendar. You've got your live calendar. You've got your events on it. You can visualize it. You can look at okay, if it's if it's local, that's a lot easier. Yeah. If you're having to travel to this, it, it becomes a lot more. Right. There's more logistics. There's Again, more stuff trying involved. Trying to reduce burnout. Exactly. From all of these other decisions that you have to make just to get to the start line mm-hmm. of, a, of a race. Traveling so, to races is, is stressful also. So if you're stacking too many weekends with lots of travel, that's that's massive demand too. It's going to burn you out eventually. Or your bank account. Or definitely the bank account as well. So we've got our A races on the calendar. Yep. Okay. So we've already cleared those with the fam. Mm-hmm. And you love to race. You love to race. So what do we do next, Dale? We're going to put in some other races. More races. However, Mm -hmm. these races, you know, there are a couple of different types, but um, we'll we'll go into that. We have to make sure that the races that um, are prior to an A race go from like less specific. They can, they can go, they don't have to go, but can go from less specific, uh, meaning less specific to the demand of the A race to more specific. So as you're moving closer and closer to that to that A race, don't pick races that have nothing to do or that will not benefit the A race. Like choosing to do a like full marathon, like in the middle of tra- like your big training blocks for a seventy point three, like doesn't help. Is is only going to derail other training. Uh, so if they don't, if it doesn't fit and make sense, yeah, like don't do it. Like, yeah. If you're looking at it and it, it's not like if, if it's not something you would be doing in training from like a duration or an intensity standpoint, probably best to not be tossing that in as an event you want to, yeah. to also be hitting. We want those races to help lift up the training and help lift up the, the progression towards your goal race and not totally detract from it right you know it's like if the if the event that you're doing is like super long then throw in some like longer that's why like a lot of people are using gravel right now yeah, so just gravel say, events yeah. to build up their base their cycling base mm-hmm. you know they're not going super hard and maybe the events may be just a little harder than they need to be going right now but they're getting in a long training day um to build base for a an event that you know, that's going to be longer and harder down the road. Exactly. You know, a lot of these, a lot of folks are doing, are focusing on unbound or like you said, rule of three, like all these different events. But those, those early season growl events have a lot of specificity toward that end goal event. Exactly. And I've got a lot of folks right now that are doing the the ordinary epics, the Mississippi uh, gravel cup. And what we're doing there is it, like you were saying, we're using it as a great training day. I want them going into it with the expectation of like, I'm not going into this to try to have the best result possible. Yeah. My goal here is it can get really old training in the cold, training by yourself, 
doing group right like the training can really get get old in these dark cold months and if you've got a race something that's more exciting something that you can run through the the prep for um that you know you're going to get that good training day in for but the the key is is i don't want my athletes going into it saying okay this is you know if i don't do well mentally that's going to tell me i'm horrible like go into it as a fun day on the bike and you know if it goes great great if it doesn't go well from like a uh where you fall in the results it doesn't matter like your main goal is a good training day yeah before you start going and populating your year calendar with all these different races let's put a little bit more context to the the other types of races that yeah. we like to put in there we categorize these you know some people call them b races and c races and all this stuff um but we kind of talk about like a, a train through race. Yep. It's kind of a, you would probably put this where, um, this is kind of like a C race, you know, you put a low, very low priority on it. So if it doesn't happen, there's no big deal. Uh, yep. you have no expectations going into it. You know, Besides it being part of your training. Yeah. Right. Having fun and it being part right. of your training. It's used, it's used to build fitness, but it's, it's more made to like, if you like to go race, Go race. It's fun. Go be with your friends and all yeah. that stuff. But don't stress that stress over it. Mm-hmm. And it, like, and don't get teed up if you're if you didn't finish in your age group or if you didn't get the time you think you should have gotten. Like, it, like these races are supposed to be in there strictly for fun. Correct. More than anything. Yep. Fun, fun and fitness. Yeah, for sure. Like we want you to, if you like to race, we're going to pick events with no expectations that we know it's going to give you a good training load. You're going to have fun doing it. And so it's like a win-win in that regard. But if you're someone who starts going into each, each race as I've got to have fitness, I'm going to be training super hard for it. That is the number one. That's the biggest issue we have. That is the number one way to burn out. Yep. Mentally yep. and physically, one you're racing too much. Two, you're expecting too much mm-hmm. out of every race. There is no person on earth, professional or otherwise, that is going to go into every race on top form, yep. and they don't expect it. They're, mm-hmm. you know, professionals are are getting paid. This is their job, and they have tons of races they go into with zero expectations, uh, and. It is what it is, yeah. you know, and they seem to do a lot better at getting over it than, oh, exactly, yeah. than the, the person who this is well, their Well, because they see it be for fun. what it is, yeah. The the result isn't a definition of your capability in the sport. 100%. It's, it's my goal was to have a big training day. I love using a, a race on the back end of a training block. So these train through races, you're training through it, right? Like. Yeah. It's somewhere in a training block. It's not coming after a rest week. You're not tapering going into it. It's meant to be part of the training load. And uh, if you choose the event right, it can be something that kind of really does that last bit of pushing your body past what it's used to doing. Yeah. Because most people are going to go harder in a race situation. Yeah. So it's great to put on the back end of a bigger training block at the right time and then rest after that yeah because you're coming up on a recovery week exactly. more than likely and yep. and you if you go a little bit too hard in the race and you smoke yourself then yeah you got rest coming it's yeah. a big deal uh you know i like on the these these other train through races we like to use in triathlon i like to use a lot of 5ks 10ks and stuff like that early on in in a training block to work on top end speed and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that and um it's not necessarily meant for you to go have a PR 5K that weekend. Correct. But where else are you going to go out and and are you going to go force yourself to do an all-out 5K by yourself, like on a path or in your neighborhood? No. No. Like, and are you going to get as much out of yourself? No. no. Like the excitement of race day naturally, you know, gets the adrenaline going yeah. and it, it does push you into a better performance, a better training day, so long as you see it as that. And we've done it numerous times, like take running, for example, where... It's like, okay, we're actually going to have you run prior to the race. We can use races and add extra. I was actually uh, just having a conversation um, with one of my athletes the other day, and we were reminiscing about uh, when he was training for Unbound. 
and there was a local mountain bike race, and, and we had him ride out from the center of town to Herb Parsons, which was a, over an hour ride for him. So he rode to the race, did the race, then rode home and had intervals on the way home. So it was like part of one of his biggest weeks, but we used the race because we knew he was going to go harder than he would, you know, by himself most likely. Yeah. Um, but we didn't say, okay, it's a race and, you know, your value is going to come from the result. So let's have you do a two hour <laughs> training day when you need to have a six hour training day. We made the race part of the event. So look at your calendar, look at what's available to you. Um, racing where there's less stress of you trying to get to a location. You know, if it's local stuff, generally you can get away with racing a little more. Race local, man. If there's, if there's a lot of stuff where you're having to travel five, six, seven hours, that wears on you. Whether yeah. you love to travel or not, that, that's gonna wear on you. So kind of think through that when you're planning out, um, planning out that schedule. Yeah. And then the other one would be, more of a, a practice race. So it's not yep. necessarily the priority, but your fitness is going to be more in line with where it's going to be well, this is, for listen, your event. I think this is this is the, the uh, category of races that gets ignored mm -hmm. the most. Yeah. Like people do, well, people will kind of get on board with train through races and stuff like that. Makes sense, you know, yeah. Or we have to force them to say, hey, this is a train through race. This, this yeah. does not make sense for you to go hard or whatever go full tilt um but when you well like with a practice race we may be testing something new or we may be like w testing our pacing to see if we can even hold that or do or working on a new nutrition plan or something like that and like when you say hey or when i say hey i want you to like in this olympic distance race i want you to swim comfortably go balls to the wall on the bike and let's just see what we can run. Like, because a lot of people never will never sacrifice a race. Like if they know that the run, especially if they know the run's going to be like tougher than it should be because they went really hard on the bike mm -hmm. uh, and they just don't get on board with it. But there's so much value in taking a race and just choosing something to try. Mm -hmm. Whether it's swimming as hard as you can this race and just see what happens, R riding this race as hard as you can or running this race, you know, go easy, swim and bike, and let's just see what we can run off the bike and what's realistic. Like, like no, like people have such a hard time getting on board with that, but you know, that's where you find out where the ceiling's at. Like that's where you find out For what sure. you're actually capable of. And those races become the biggest confidence boosters. Yep. Even if you only had one, like in triathlon, if you only had one good leg, but you came out with a, like a crazy fast bike split, mm -hmm. that gets people excited. Yeah. Well, and it's going to set you up for more success at your, at your peak event. Right. Like you learn as much from a great situation as you do from a bad one. Oh yeah. So like going into it say, okay, Hey, we're going to test this. If it worked great, we're going to apply it on the next one. If it didn't work, Okay. Well, guess what? We're gonna we're gonna adjust things. We're gonna change. But fortunately, this wasn't the peak race, so it was okay for us to test that, for us to experiment, for it to fail. Like that's okay. Uh, and the people that race more, and that's where like I guess you know cycling can be a little easier for my road race folks. It's because there is a lot more races yeah. to test it out. So like one of the big things that we have is you hear about taper, and people will ask us about tapering, and I want to taper for this event, and I want to like. I've heard for a taper, I got to cut volume and really keep intensity super high. And I need uh, to cut volume for three weeks before <laughs> somewhere before between 14 race. and 21 days before. <laughs> and I need to carbo load and I need to, so like there's all this stuff. Well, if you think about it, like you've been, f most people generally follow and, and what we do with our athletes typically is follow like a two week up or three week build style, harder progression and then a, and a rest week. If, you, if you've never played around with a taper and you just save that for your goal event, who knows what's going to happen? And I just had a conversation the other day with one of my athletes uh, uh, who was actually asking about a taper. And I was like, what we generally do, and this is kind of our recommendation, is we want to figure out, do you do better coming into a race fully rested? Oh, yeah. Or do you come into a race better with some efforts in the body. Yep. 
And so we kind of put people into one of those two camps. And so for some, most of my folks, actually, it's the week of a race comes off of an unload. So we do a rest week the week prior to that. Make sure we freshen the body up. But then we actually put efforts into the body more similar to what you were current, like you were doing prior to that. We don't go crazy with intensity and go super short with the volume. And because what I've found is as soon as someone's been used to doing twice as much volume and they see, oh, I was doing a two hour ride on a Tuesday and now I only have a 45 minute ride or a one hour ride, but I've got two hard efforts. They're like, I can blow these efforts out. And you end up going so hard that you end up carrying some fatigue. You kind of shock the body. You can go into a race. You're just not sure of what's going to happen. Yeah. So I'm getting long-winded here. But we like, we like to know in advance. We want you to test it in advance. And that's where one of these practice races can work. Let's test it with you going into it rested. Let's test it with you having some efforts in the legs. Let's see how much intensity you need or don't. Are you flat on race day or not? What kind of warm-up do you need or not? Um, what kind of fueling works or not? All things to test. There we go. And if you if you if you never like go into a race, you know, willing willing to uh, sacrifice that race if things don't go right, then like you're never going to figure it out. Exactly. Like, you'll you'll never figure yep. it out. So we've got uh, so we've got now a races, a races, train through races, and practice races. Yep. And so now that we have that all of those on our big giant 365 day calendar mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like n- now you see all these dots everywhere mm-hmm. uh you know with your family stuff and so, now you can start taking races off <laughs> <laughs> yeah right with a use a use a, a race board marker here yeah. and we can start kind of clearing them out or at least circling sections well, three month pinch blocks points. yeah like if you see a pinch point like uh a race well, we already talked about that but an a race close to something really important change your a race or or if you see that hey i uh, i i know i this all looked good on paper but once it's on the calendar i see now that i'm going to end up racing five weekends in a row probably not the best idea with the family so which ones can i pull out here you know and once you get all of those different races on the calendar and they've marked with priorities and stuff like that and all the family stuff work stuff it is so easy to like start taking them out yep. and erasing them off of your calendar so that you can free up more time for maybe more specific training Mm -hmm. or just time with the family or uh just some downtime some like non-structured you know mental break time yep so it you know you really you've got to not say you can't race a lot but you have to be a little bit picky and choosy when you have other responsibilities Mm -hmm. in your life um and you got to keep perspective on the on what your expectations are from each of those events. Like if if every single race is priority, it's going to be a problem yeah. for you. So expectations going into events, you have to be okay with having having some poor results along the way here, or just knowing that you're going into it without expectation. Yeah. Like We've take, had people with their best races when they went into a exactly. practice race. Take the stress off, man. Because they're like, hey, I'm going to test something new, and if it fails, fine. Right. I don't care. Like, that's the whole point of this. And they have the best race. They have better race than their priority race. <laughs> I do it all the time. Yeah. But my my general thing is I'm going to ride this bike as hard as I can go. Bam. And just see if I can run. Blow it out. <laughs> Usually it doesn't work out. All right, so moving on. So we got our races. We've got our. We've tried to pick races that are going to help our priority race and not hurt it. So anyone that's going to hurt it, especially in the last twelve weeks leading towards it, we need to erase any pinch points. We're going to erase those races. We're talking it over with the people in our lives, whether it's bosses, you know, your employers. Don't tell your boss. Your <laughs> you your, your significant others. Like you've you've got everyone on board. Um, and they're aware of this, then super important for the people that race all the time, look at that priority race or that priority time of year. And then right after that, put a transition in. What's a transition, Dale? 
Uh, transition is where you you decide that you want to ride a lot more, <laughs> ride harder, and then continue to race. Oh, the sarcasm at is the thick with this level. one. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. I thought you were going to say uh, it's that that spot between the swim, the bike, and the run, right? <laughs> where you're just planning on going really hard. Yeah. No. Uh, transition is the period after a big big goal race where you're taking the mental and physical recovery. Um, you're, you know, you're going unstructured and we have whole podcasts on this too, but you're going unstructured, you know, and sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's longer. Mm -hmm. Um, but realistically the goal is like, like do very little at first rest. Yeah. Rest, let your body recover. Mm -hmm. And then kind of, it's almost like, feel it out and kind of wait until you're like chomping at the bit to like get back at it. What about the person who never is off? They're like, Hey, I just want more and more and more. Like I want more races. I think I can do better. I think I can have better fitness. I think I can, you, you people have to take time. You're the off. problem. You're the, you're, the you're, problem. you're, uh, it's not a problem till it is. Yeah. Like it's, It'll we dealt with be it. a problem. It's eventually going to catch up to you. So yeah. our job as coaches is to speak to you from our experience, from seeing a lot of athletes who've gone through this, competitive folks that want more and more and more. We're there. Like, we want to have better and better results I would, ourselves. I want to train a ton. But. Yeah, I'd love to race a ton. Like, But you eventually, you pay for it. And... Oftentimes, that that you don't want that massive decrease in motivation that comes from burning the candle for too long to hit that next season right around your goal race because you never let off the gas. Yeah, um, you may get away from it or with it for a while, but it will catch up to you. So plan those transitions in and don't deviate from that. You're not going to say, "Okay, well, you know, I didn't have the race I wanted to." So now I'm going to add a race Just keep going. Three, three weeks from now yeah. or one month from now. Plan it in. Hold to it. Learn from what happened in your previous race. Reset your calendar. Reset your expectations. And then make the adjustments as you lead into the next one. Don't just start adding more stuff in there in hopes that you're going to have that result you were dreaming of. I always, and we, again, we did a whole podcast on double peaking, mm -hmm. but I always put, uh, I always have a trend. If somebody has a mid season, big race, there's a, there's a two week period after that where there's, where it's unstructured and then we'll rebuild for the next one. It's part of the reason why you need to give yourself three months between big, big races because exactly. you need to allow yourself the time to, to do a little bit of a rebuild. And I know you, most people don't want to do it, but it's, like long term, it's going to keep you in the sport longer. Mm -hmm. And realistically, the folks that have been in the sport the longest, they're the strongest. And it's because the consistency there, you know, and they didn't burn themselves out to the point where they took an entire year off or, or months and months off. Like you've mm -hmm. got to, you got to play the mental game here a little bit. Well, yeah, that's, <clears throat> and that's such a huge part of it is even if you don't feel like you need that mental time off, if you're, it's by taking that, it's by taking the time where you do let the body relax, you do let the mind relax, that's going to allow you to be much more focused and mentally in it and doing the hard workouts when it matters that are going to give you that peak performance. Right. So if you're constantly just kind of like the folks that, that allow themselves that mental and physical recovery are able to, to deal with what can be not real fun leading into that goal race. Those workouts can be really hard. They can be really stressful. Like they're meant to be or repetitive or, or repetitive. And that does come at a mental cost. So if you're doing it right, you want that time off. You need that time off. If you're someone who odds are, if you're, if you're ready to just get right back into it, you haven't quite prepped. Yeah, if you're go back as to doing much as you could like, if you have to do something, go back to doing like fun, like f whatever sounds fun to you mm -hmm. for the, at the time yep. and, and not <laughs> high intensity racing. Yeah. Uh, you know, allow the time, the fear, it's always the fear around, I'm going to lose fitness. I'm going to, I'm going to lose fitness. I'm going to be starting over. Like there, there are 
professional athletes that take a month off, two months off. We just talked with Johnny Brown. Yeah. Three weeks. <clears throat> and no bike riding. Did nothing for three weeks. Yeah. And then comes back and starts training again. And they're not going to come back at a lower level. Like, you're not going to come back weaker. Like You may have lost the high end, but it's not like your body lost its ability to go to go hard, to achieve the power levels you were at before. You're going to get back there. The body will get back there. It's the rest that's going to allow you to not only get back there, but come back a little bit stronger the next time. But but if you're burning it the whole time, not going to happen. And we could probably go into a whole podcast just on like why it's okay to lose high end at certain points of time. It's okay. And why it's okay for your the long course folks or the gravel folks or the you know the twelve hour race folks. Why it's okay to stop going long at times and focusing on the higher end. How dare you say that? So during that, after that transition, what we want you to do is say, okay, I'm going to spend, whether it's, you know, if you're, if you're after kind of the the second, if you had them space three months apart and you're kind of going into an off season, say, it's okay if you're still wanting to spatter some races in there. Um, but we want you to start with to look no at, expectation with no expectations. Yes. And not super high intensity, um, uh, full gas necessarily, but start looking at, okay, what was I training? What were the demands? Was I going long? Was I doing a bunch of zone three work? Like as you train for the long stuff, you end up doing a whole lot of that. Um, or was I doing super high intensity and in that balance, fun, rebuild, stressing the body different than it has been. You want to look to sort of do the opposite, right? Like if you were going super long, okay, let's let's rest. And then maybe we're going to think about, okay, let's work a little bit of intensity in there or work some cross training in there or definitely get the strength training back going if you neglected that for a long time. Get in the gym, folks. But work the demands that are different from what you'd been training the previous three months. Yeah, so if you're going from like the, the all-day zone three, you know, till your legs fall off. Mm-hmm. Go back down and do some like 30 second, 60 second efforts, you know, build that top end, that zone five, six, you know, plus stuff up because that's probably what took it. And it took the back seat, mm-hmm. uh, you know, during your big build up for this big, important day. So yeah, switch it up. Switch, switch it up. Joe. Exactly. All right. I think that's all we got today. What did we miss? You guys tell us, let us know in the comments. Yeah. And we appreciate you guys hanging out, listening, watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Adios. Peace.